Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for a journey into the heart of the notorious desert on Earth, the Sahara. For centuries, its vast expanse of sand has concealed a trove of extraordinary secrets, hidden from human eyes. But now, a brave group of scientists is taking on the scorching heat and relentless drought, determined to unveil the mysteries that lie within. In this captivating video, we will take you on a thrilling exploration, revealing the most astonishing scientific discoveries made in this desert that have left everyone in awe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the incredible journey that awaits you in the depths of the Sahara Desert. The Missing Sahara P-40 from World War II. In the heart of a fierce desert war that ravaged North Africa back in June 1942, where the British Empire forces clash with Rommel's Africa Corps, Flight Sergeant Dennis Copping, a 24-year-old daredevil from Southend-on-Sea, Essex, took a very dangerous flight and never returned. Dennis is no ordinary guy, but a skilled pilot, flying those badass Curtis P-40 Kitty Hawk fighter bombers for the RAF's 60 Squadron. On that fateful day, Dennis strapped himself into the cockpit of his beloved P-40, codenamed E.T. 574, ready to take to the skies. What was he trying to do? Well, the poor plane was all battered and bruised, so Dennis needed to fly it to an Egyptian base for some much-needed repairs. Nobody suspected that would be a deadly flight. After all, Dennis was a pro, and he had everything under control. With a heart full of courage and a belly full of butterflies, Dennis revs up the engines, zooms down the runway, and bursts into the clear North African air. The wind whips through his hair as he soars higher and higher, feeling like a true hero of the sky. Eyes. But just when everything seemed to be going well, disaster strikes. Dennis and his trusty P-40 vanished into thin air. It was like they'd been swallowed up by a desert sandstorm. Nobody knows what happened to them, and it became a total mystery. Fast forward to 2012, a Polish oil worker named Jack was wandering through the Sahara Desert, minding his own business. And guess what he stumbled upon? You won't believe it. There, in the middle of nowhere, was ET-547, Dennis's missing plane. It had been sitting there all alone for a mind-boggling 70 years. So why did nobody gone in search of this young, innocent corp and his ordeal? What Jack saw with his eyes left him dumbfounded. The plane was still intact, although a bit worse for wear. The desert winds had stripped away the paint, leaving it looking like a weathered warrior. The propeller and nose cone were missing, casualties of a rough landing. And there are signs that Dennis used parts of his parachute to create a shelter. That's some clever thinking right there. But hold on a second. Where exactly was Dennis? Despite searching high and low, there was no sign of him. It's like he vanished into thin air. The only clues left was a campsite near the wreckage and scattered remnants of his parachute found miles away. Did he survive the crash? Did he try to make it out of the desert on foot? It's a real head scratcher. After it was found, ET-574 was eventually taken to the War Museum in El Alamein, Egypt. However, opinions were divided on what should have been done with the aircraft. Some believed it should have been left in the desert, serving as a poignant memorial to the young pilot who ventured into the unknown. They felt that the plane's presence in its original resting place would honor Dennis Copping's memory. On the other hand, the museum chose to restore the plane, aiming to preserve this remarkable piece of history. Singing sand dunes, you know what's really cool about the Sahara Desert? The majestic sand dunes. People love taking pictures of these beauties, especially during sunset. It's just magical. No one had to see this. This new secret discovery in the Sahara has changed history. But imagine you're standing there, enjoying the view, and suddenly you hear the dunes sing. It's like something out of Marco Polo's wildest tales. He wrote about strange experiences in the desert, near the town of Lop in the greater Gobi region. Some thought his stories were made up, but there's a grain of truth hidden in his tales. According to Marco Polo, the desert was haunted at night by the voices of demons or spirits trying to lure people from the road. He even claimed that these spirits played all sorts of musical instruments. Pretty wild, huh? But here's the thing. The source of these sounds is far from demonic. Dunes all around the world are known to sing, boom, and even burp. It's been a mystery that scientists have been trying to solve for years. They've been studying the conditions needed to produce these eerie tunes. About a decade ago, researchers created a sand avalanche and and guess what they found? The size of the sand grains affects the tone of the sound. Who would have thought? But here's where it gets really crazy. The sand produces so many different sounds. A hum, a throaty boom, and even burping. How on earth does the same sand create all these distinct sounds? Well, the scientists have an answer for us. It turns out that different kinds of seismic waves are responsible for each sound. The researchers used instruments called geophones to measure these seismic waves as they traveled through large dunes. They discovered that a type of wave called a prime 
primary wave, or P wave, produces a booming sound. These waves are super powerful and can travel through the entire dune. On the other hand, there's another type of wave called Rayleigh waves. These waves spread across the surface of the dune, causing those burping sounds. It's pretty incredible, isn't it? Even though sand is solid, when you have a mass of tiny grains all moving together, it behaves like a liquid. It's like the sand turns into a giant speaker, amplifying the vibrations. So now you know the science behind the singing sand dunes. It's fascinating, really. However, knowing the explanation doesn't change how you feel when you experience it in person. It's still a mind-blowing and awe-inspiring phenomenon. Dinosaurs. Guess what? There's been a massive fossil discovery in the Sahara Desert that's got scientists all excited. They've uncovered the remains of a gigantic creature called Spinosaurus, and it's giving us a whole new perspective on dinosaurs. The fossil is a whopping 95 million years old. And what's really cool is that it confirms something scientists have suspected for a while. Spinosaurus is actually the first known swimming dinosaur. According to the researchers, this creature had some pretty unique features. It had flat, paddle-like feet and nostrils on top of its crocodilian head. Head. Those nostrils were perfect for submerging underwater without any trouble. It's like this dinosaur was built for the water. The study was published in the journal Science, and the lead author, Nizar Ibrahim, a paleontologist from the University of Chicago, said, It is a really bizarre dinosaur. There's no real blueprint for it. Can you imagine? This beast had a long neck, a long trunk, and a long tail. But that's not all. It also had a seven-foot sail on its back and a snout like a crocodile. Talk about a unique combination. Now, when they analyzed the body proportions of Spinosaurus, they realized it wasn't as agile on land as other dinosaurs. So, Ibrahim thinks this dino spent a lot of time in the water. It's like a real-life aquatic dinosaur adventure. But wait, there's more. In October 2020, another study on Spinosaurus was published in the journal Cretaceous Research. Those scientists discovered something mind-blowing. In the very same desert area, they found a fossil tooth where there used to be a river called the Kem Kem. Can you believe it? Millions of years ago, water was flowing in that desert. This whopping one 1,200 teeth were found belonging to Spinosaurus during their excavations. That's a crazy number, and it turns out this abundance of teeth could only have come from dinosaurs that spent a ton of time in the water. It's like they were constantly swimming around, doing their thing. This discovery has completely changed our understanding of Spinosaurus. We used to think they were exclusively land-dwelling, but now we know they were well adapted to an aquatic lifestyle. It's amazing how much we can learn from just a bunch of old teeth. Who knows what other surprises are waiting to be unearthed. The blue eye of the Sahara. Now, when we say eye, we don't mean an actual eye like yours. It's more like a geological wonder that possesses its own unique charm. Some call it the blue eye of the Sahara, while others refer to it as the Rishat structure. This formation spans a vast 40-kilometer region in Mauritania. The eye first caught the attention of the world when Gemini astronauts photographed it in the 1960s. These images provided valuable insights into its size, height, and overall extent. Initially, geologists believed that the eye of the Sahara was a meteorite impact crater, formed when an extraterrestrial object collided with the Earth's surface. However, further studies have revealed a different story. The Richat structure is, in fact, a large elliptical dome that has undergone extensive erosion. Its diameter measures a whopping 40 kilometers. It turns out that volcanic activity beneath the Earth's surface uplifted the entire landscape surrounding the eye millions of years ago. Interestingly, the region wasn't always the arid desert we see today. In the past, it was teeming with flowing water, making it a land of abundance. Over time, wind and water deposited layers of sandstone rocks from blowing winds and the sediments of ancient lakes and rivers. As the subsurface volcanic flow subsided, the overlying layers of sandstone and other rocks were pushed upward. However, wind and water erosion began to wear away at the domed layers of rock, causing the structure to settle and collapse inward. The end result? A striking formation that resembles an eye. So how did this eye come to be? The story starts when the supercontinent Pangaea begins to break apart. As the Atlantic Ocean formed, its waters flowed into the region. Meanwhile, magma from underneath pushed upward, forming a circular rocky dome enveloped by layers of sandstone. Erosion gradually wore down the igneous rocks and sandstones, causing the dome to subside and leaving behind circular ridges. These ridges give the Richat structure its distinctive sunken circular shape. People living in the Sahara. 
You won't believe it, but people actually call the Sahara Desert home. Yep, you heard that right. While it might seem like a vast, barren expanse, there are folks who have found their place in this sandy wonderland. Now let's talk about who's living it up in the Sahara. Most of them can be found chilling in the oases and highlands along the desert's fringes. You've got Arabic-speaking peeps like the Bedouin of Libya and the Chamba of Algeria, making their homes in the northern Sahara. And guess what? On the northern and western edges of the desert, there are many groups of Berbers. The big the biggest Berber-speaking group in the Sahara is the Tuareg, with a population ranging from 500,000 to 1 million. These guys have cultural and religious ties to Islamic Arab-speaking Northern Africa. It's like a melting pot of cultures out there. But wait, there's more. In the eastern parts, specifically Niger and Northern Chad, we have the Tata or Tubu peoples. Now these folks have languages and cultures closely linked to those of sub-Saharan African groups. It's like a beautiful blend of different traditions and backgrounds. So let's talk business. The Sahara Sahara isn't just a place to kick back and enjoy the sun, although there's plenty of that. The major economic activities here revolve around livestock herding and trade. Those who call the desert home raise camels, goats, and sheep. And in some cases, they even have their own little gardens with date palms. Talk about making the most out of the sandy terrain. Now if we're talking trade, there's one thing that's been in demand since ancient times. Salt. Salt is the name of the game in the Sahara. It's either mined or obtained from evaporated water. And hey, the Tuaregs are still in the salt trade. They've been at it for ages, swapping that precious mineral for grain and keeping the tradition alive. People live their lives in the Sahara Desert, carving out their own little corners in this vast land of sand. It's a testament to the adaptability and resilience of humanity, thriving in one of the most challenging environments on Earth. So next time you think the desert is empty, remember that there's a whole lot more going on than meets the eye. The Tree of Life now let's talk about the loneliest and quirkiest tree in the world, the Tree of Tenna. This tree is an acacia that stole the spotlight back in the 1930s, and here's why it was such a big deal. The Tree of Tenna stood all by itself in the middle of the Tenor Desert, right smack in the center of the Sahara. Now this place is no picnic. The heat there doesn't just dry up the air, but it sucks out every last drop of moisture from any living thing. And let's not forget the sandstorms that regularly go wild. It's like the desert's way of saying, no thanks, I'm not sharing my space with anyone. But guess what? Despite these inhospitable conditions, our little acacia friend said, I ain't giving up. Scientists estimated that this tough tree was at least 300 years old. Can you believe it? For centuries, it somehow managed to find underground water, battle strong winds, and survive the scorching sun. Now this tree was a big deal, especially for outsiders like military personnel. It served as a kind of landmark in the vast desert, an oasis of hope in a sea of sand. People considered it sacred, and rightly so. But unfortunately, in 1959, tragedy struck. A military truck crashed into our beloved tree of Tenna. Despite the damage though, the tree didn't give up. It kept on living, showing the world its indomitable spirit. But alas, in 1973, one of those pesky Libyan trucks finally finished the job, and the tree was no more. In the very spot where this once magnificent tree stood, there's now a metal sculpture commemorating its wonder. It's like a little tribute in the middle of the Sahara, reminding us of the tree of Tenna's extraordinary tale. Wales. The Wadi al hitan Valley, located approximately 150 kilometers from Cairo, Egypt, is indeed a remarkable archaeological site. It is known for its abundance of whale remains that are around 50 million years old. You may wonder how these whales ended up in the desert. Well, scientists have an intriguing explanation. Around 40 to 50 million years ago, the area where the Wadi al hitan Valley now exists was underwater. During that time, the Tethys Sea was situated south of the modern Mediterranean Sea. Over time, the Tethys Sea gradually shifted northward, leaving behind dried-up areas that became layered with limestone and sand deposits. It is within these deposits that the whale remains were discovered. What makes the whale fossils found in this region even more fascinating is that some of them belong to whales that had four legs. Yes, you heard that right. The ancient ancestors of modern whales were capable of moving on land. This particular species was first encountered by scientists in 2008 and was named Phacus Anubis after the Egyptian god Anubis. Anubis, as their heads somewhat resembled that of a dog. These ancient whales, with a body length of up to three meters, possessed long jaws and powerful teeth. With such natural weaponry, they were capable of crushing crocodiles. It is believed that Phacus Anubis were formidable predators that primarily lived in water, but occasionally ventured onto land in the Egyptian desert. The discovery of these ancient whale fossils with four legs provides valuable insights into the evolutionary history of whales and their transition from land-dwelling 
crawling mammals to the marine creatures we know today. Now, it's time for today's subscriber pick. What can you see on the screen? An ancient fossil skeleton that has been discovered, buried beneath the sun-baked sands of the Sahara. No one had to see this. This new secret discovery in the Sahara has changed history. With each bone meticulously studied, scientists are piecing together the puzzle of this long-lost inhabitant of the Sahara. This has stirred up too many. What kind of creature is this? How did it navigate the extreme heat and aridity of the Sahara? And what can its existence teach us about the ecological history of this mesmerizing desert? Now, this discovery is just a snippet of the deep mysteries hidden in the Sahara. What do you think of them? Do they spark your curiosity? Do they make you wonder about the mysteries of our planet? Or maybe they make you question our own role in the big picture of time. We want to hear your thoughts. Share your opinions, theories, and speculations in the comment section. Rocks. You know, when we think of the Sahara Desert, we often picture this massive sandbox stretching as far as the eye can see. But no, the truth is way more rockin' than that. The Sahara is mostly made up of rocky landscapes called Hamada. So all those windblown dunes you've seen in pictures and movies, they're just a small slice of the desert pie, covering a measly 30% of the whole shebang. Well, it's a whopping 70 of good old gravel. And get this, even the sand in the Sahara comes from those rocks. Over time, those bad boys break down into smaller particles thanks to some fancy weathering processes like chemicals doing their thing, biology doing its stuff, and the good old temperature playing its part. It's like nature's rock concert, breaking it down one tune at a time. But wait, there's more. We're talking stone plateaus, salt flats, arid valleys, rivers, mountains, streams, and oases. So believe it when you hear that the Sahara Desert is way more than you can even imagine. It's a wild mixtape of rocks, gravel, and all sorts of mind-blowing sights. It's like nature's greatest hits album, with each track revealing a new and unexpected beat. So if you ever find yourself in the Sahara, prepare to be amazed by the desert's rockin' and rollin' landscape that's sure to leave you in awe. Lost Cities Scientists often make amazing discoveries, and among them are the ruins of ancient lost cities in the Sahara Desert. In Libya, British scientists made a very interesting finding when they discovered over 100 fortified structures resembling castles in a photo taken from space. According to experts, these structures are approximately 2,000 years old and were built by the ancient Garamantian civilization, about which little is known in the field of science. This discovery holds great value for historians and archaeologists as it sheds light on a previously enigmatic civilization. During the exploration of the ruins, specialists from the University of Leicester uncovered castle-like structures reaching up to four meters in height, remnants of local residents' houses, burial pyramids, and even irrigation systems. These findings provide direct evidence of historical inconsistencies. Interestingly, ancient Roman chronicles described the Garamantes as wild nomads. However, the ruins of these cities suggest that they were, in fact, a sedentary and highly developed civilization that managed to adapt to life in a region plagued by incredible drought. The discovery of these ancient cities challenges previous assumptions and highlights the complexity of human history. It underscores the importance of continued archaeological research in unraveling the mysteries of the past and allowing us to gain a more comprehensive understanding of ancient civilizations. The Ubari Lake this is one of the most stunning oases in the world, Ubari Lakes, nestled in the Libyan part of the Sahara Desert. This place is like a hidden gem, just waiting to blow your mind. About 100,000 years ago, these lakes were something else. They were deeper, more extensive, and served as a glorious source of fresh drinking water for animals and humans alike. It was like paradise in the middle of the desert. But as time ticked on, things changed. Fast forward to today, and the Ubari Oasis boasts 20 breathtaking lakes surrounded by majestic palm trees, from the shallowest Gaben Lake with a depth of around 7 meters to the grandest Ion Aldiana Lake. Plunging to a jaw-dropping depth of at least 30 meters, these lakes are a sight to behold. But here's the kicker. The water in these lakes has an incredible salt concentration, giving the Dead Sea a run for its money. Yep, you heard that right. This ain't your regular drinking water, folks. It's more like a giant seasoning shaker. So, don't go taking a sip of that salty goodness unless you want your taste buds to go on a wild ride. Now, you might be wondering, who on earth would want to live in a place with water that's not suitable for drinking? Well, fear not. Curious minds because the lakes aren't devoid of life. They're home to these little shrimp-like creatures, and the locals have got some creative culinary skills up their sleeves. They catch those critters, grind them into a paste, and whip up some delicious pies. Talk about making the best out of a salty situation. But let's not forget the bigger picture here. An oasis with clean, drinkable water is crucial for both humans and animals. Unfortunately, climate changes have done their thing, turning 
turning Ubari into a system of lakes with water that's a big no-no for quenching your thirst. So, if you ever find yourself gazing upon the Ubari lakes, take a moment to appreciate the wonders of our planet and the incredible resilience of life in even the most challenging of environments. Meteorite. Get ready to hear this incredible discovery made in 2020. A massive meteorite weighing a whopping 32 kilograms was unearthed in the Sahara Desert. And let me tell you, this is not your average space rock. After some serious analysis, the brilliant minds of researchers determined that this meteorite was no ordinary fragment. Oh no, friends, it's a piece of a protoplanet with an astonishing age of 4.6 billion years. We're talking about something that predates most of what we know on this planet. They even gave it a name, X002. Sounds fancy, doesn't it? Now hold on to your hats because things get even more intriguing. Scientists classified X002 as an aubrite, a type of stony meteorite that's known for its lack of rounded inclusions. These aubrites usually contain basalt and are believed to come from either Mars or the Moon. But guess what? X002 didn't play by the rules. It was made of andesite, a magmatic volcanic rock that's quite different from the expected basalt. Let's dive into the science, shall we? Basalt is formed through the rapid cooling of magnesium and iron-rich lava, whereas Andesite is a whole different ballgame. It's formed from silicates with a high sodium content and typically occurs in what we call subduction zones on our planet. These zones are found at the boundaries of lithospheric plates, where one block of the Earth's crust sinks beneath another. It's like a geological dance-off, with one plate doing the limbo beneath another. Now here's where it gets mind-blowing. X002 is truly one of a kind because its composition suggests that it belongs to the protoplanets of our early solar system. Yep, you heard me right. This meteor Right holds clues to understanding the formation of the primary crust that covered those ancient celestial bodies. It's like taking a peek into the history of our cosmic neighborhood and unraveling the secrets of the past. This discovery is like a cosmic time capsule, giving scientists a glimpse into the early days of our solar system. It's a testament to human curiosity and the wonders that lie beyond our planet. Who knows what other celestial treasures are waiting to be uncovered in the vast expanse of the universe? One thing's for sure. The more we explore, the more we uncover the extraordinary stories hidden within the stars. Massive Expansion did you know that the Sahara Desert is growing bigger? The world's largest hot desert is expanding, and scientists have some fascinating insights as to why this is happening. Now let's get down to business. Climate change seems to be playing a part in this desert's expansion. You see, researchers have been digging deep to understand the factors behind the Sahara's growth, and what they've found is a cause for concern. According to their studies, the Sahara is currently about 10% larger than it was almost a century ago. That's no small increase, you know. In a recent study, these scientists delved into rainfall data gathered across Africa, going all the way back to 1920. They meticulously examined how changing conditions affected the regions around the boundaries of the mighty desert. And guess what? They discovered that it's not just natural climate cycles that are responsible for this expansion. Human-driven climate change is also playing a significant role. As these brilliant minds were busy analyzing seasonal cycles of temperature and rainfall across Africa, something caught their attention. The Sahel, this semi-arid region which connects the Sahara to the the savannas of Sudan showed a concerning trend of decreasing precipitation. And that got them thinking. You see, these scientists are on a mission to unravel the intricate connection between rainfall trends and the Sahara's expansion over time. In the realm of deserts, it's natural for their sizes to fluctuate as conditions shift from wetter to drier. But when it comes to the Sahara, we're looking at a serious case of expansion. So what does all this mean? It means that our actions, as humans, are having a profound impact on the environment. Climate change, driven by our own activities, is altering the delicate balance of our planet. And as a result, the Sahara Desert is stretching its sandy arms, growing larger and larger. This discovery serves as a stark reminder of the consequences of our actions. It's a call to action, urging us to address the pressing issue of climate change and work towards a sustainable future. The Sahara's expansion is just one of the many signs that our planet is changing, and it's up to us to take responsibility and make a positive difference. So, dear friends, let's join hands, raise awareness, and take steps toward preserving the beauty and balance of our world. Together, we can make a difference and ensure a brighter future for generations to come. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.